What is up guys, Calvin here, your host and founder of State of Mercury and leader of the E-Rebel Alliance. Just kidding. Today I have six reasons why your guitar tone still sucks even after following a tutorial on YouTube. All right, so it's been a couple weeks since you guys have seen me, and that's for a few reasons. I moved apartments. I've been dealing with some awful sound issues since moving apartments, and yeah, so if you are looking for a rework, it's coming soon, I promise. But for now, six reasons why your guitar tone still sucks, even after following a tutorial. Like and subscribe if you want to see this stuff or if you want to see some more Metallica reworks. I'm sure if you've seen any of my tutorials or Bryce Borilla's tutorials or anybody's tutorials on getting guitar tones online, you've seen some guy commenting something like, I followed these exact settings and I did all the things you said, but everything still sounds bad. I mean, obviously Mr. Borilla here is compensating for some inadequacy in his part. It's your fault, it's not mine, da 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 da. You've seen him everywhere, there's tons of these guys and getting a little sick of it, so I want to address some issues that you might be running into if you're that guy. So here's my six reasons and we're gonna start from, well, they're, they're in no particular order. So number six, check your equipment, your guitar cables, you know, the connections, your you know, the inputs, is it like USB or Firewire? Make sure these things are all functioning correctly. Everything sounds good coming through them. You're not having any weird gross noises. You know, e equipment is important. So I mean like new strings, are you using like cheap pickups or like expensive pickups or whatever, all, all this stuff matters. You know, like good wiring and like everything matters there. So are you getting electrical disturbances like I'm getting right now? Is the cheap interface, uh, you know, are the, the preamps on that broken to, like all these things make sure you check all of the technology you're using to record your guitars because it's it you know you're just gonna be it's gonna be an uphill battle if everything's kind of out of whack so make sure that is all ready to go so number five i guess would be use the proper equipment. If you're plugging into your computer using one of those like rocksmith quarter inch to usb cables you are just not gonna get the desired sound. I mean, these cables are cheap and they're not really made for recording. They're, you know, but they're probably fine to play with and jam or whatever through your computer. But if you're following a tutorial off of YouTube or something like that, you it's just not going to happen. You're not going to get the clarity. It's, it's just, it's not going to happen. So make sure you're like getting an interface or something like that, something that plugs into your computer and like actually plugs your guitar into that box. Like I'm using the, the Scarlett Focusrite uh, 4i4. So Something cheap, it doesn't really matter, but do some research. All right, so number four is once you've got your stuff plugged in, you've got like a DAW, like Reaper or something like that, and you've got your interface hooked up to your computer, hooked up to the DAW, everything's in, you get your outputs, whatever. Turn your gain down, like like check your gain as you're turning it up, but like if you're cranking it, right? If you're, if you're clipping before you even put your overdrive or your amp sim in or... Um, your effects, it's going to sound like ass. So you, if, if you're clipping before you get to all those effects and all that, you can bet your ass you're going to be clipping and having some bad sounds coming out of there after you load these effects in. Furthermore, you'll be creating like a massive amounts of distortion before you even get there. So once you get to those plugins, you're just going to have this inaudible thing and it's not even going to be like a viable source to record. So what this means is not hitting like the red zone on your interface. So a lot of interfaces will have indicators on the front that indicate if you're clipping or not. If you don't have these lights on the front, usually you should be able to monitor in your DAW about how high you're going or how low you're going. Minus 12 dB is a good place to sort of aim for. Not much higher, not much lower. That's pretty good for me anyways. And on top of dialing back the gain on your recording device, dial back the gain on your guitar. Maybe turn your guitar down just a tag because you're going to get rid of a lot of buzz and hum sounds from your guitar and all that. And it's just gonna come through a little cleaner. The distortion is gonna be a little cleaner. Just back off just a little bit on the gain. So like if you're creating like a distortion, like with an overdrive pedal, and you go into it already coming too hot, th that distortion pedal is not giving you an accurate like representation of what that pedal even sounds like. It's like, you're just creating problems before you've even started. So make sure you dial back that gain little bit on your guitar and make sure it's at a good level on your interface. So number three is sample rate and bit depth. For sample rate, I'm just not going to say much about it. I don't want to get into explaining the whole thing really, but I just want to say that 44.1 kilohertz is your standard. Go with that. You can't go wrong. As for bit depth, I will talk about this a little bit because this is, seems like a little more important. Bit depth basically is 
the resolution that you're recording. So like imagine a TV, you know, it's got less pixels on it. So you're getting like a, you know, pixelated worse picture. But the more pixels you put in there, the clearer the picture you get. So the higher the bit depth, the more information can be recorded at higher levels of clarity. Lower means less. So the higher the bit depth, it'll be closer and a more accurate representation of like the original analog wave before it gets converted to digital zeros and one thus making a more clear and more precise recording this should be adjustable on any DAW out there just make sure your interface is capable of going higher to sum it up higher bit depth more clarity better recording lower bit depth you're going to lose you're going to degrade a little bit keep that in mind that's pretty important number two i'd say is really important because this actually kind of directly relates to a video that i'm responding to right now so Arrange your plugins properly. So think of your virtual amp setup just as you would a physical setup. So like if I'm doing it, I go like my guitar to an EQ, to a overdrive, to another EQ, to the amp head, then the impulse responses, which is your cabinet, and then you can record it. And there you go. You know, delays and reverb and stuff like that. You can add those after if you want to. You can add them in there as well. but you're not gonna get the sound that you're following on YouTube if you're putting those plugins out of order. Make sure you put those plugins in the right order because again, you don't want it to be an uphill struggle for no reason, just right out of the box. It, it, you, you, it's just a battle you can't win. So do yourself a favor and make sure you got those plugins lined up the right way. So my number one beef with those of you who have a hard time with the sound of your guitar after you follow a YouTube tutorial is that you're listening to the instructions exactly. Cursor over everything that uh, I've changed as you instructed, so. And this actually happens a lot with mixing in general for like videos that are on YouTube. You can't go, there's no set lines really. There's guidelines you can go by and general rules of thumb you can follow but if you're following exactly it's not gonna get the same result every time your guitar is different your pickups are different your chords are different your interface is different your room your setup where you are is different the strings are different all that stuff you will probably never get the exact sound that you're trying to learn on youtube love it or hate it that's just how it's going to be you're gonna have to do your own tweaking to fix tiny little discrepancies with the tones and even if you had the exact same guitar as me and interface and chords and whatever every individual piece of gear varies like like my guitar even if it's the same washburn as you have is going to be a slightly different just because there were two different pieces made at two different times like it's 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 just it's pretty simple do not follow exact like once you follow exactly, use your ears and listen to the little discrepancies in those tones and see what it is you need to fix and customize. Do what you need to to fit your needs for your setup because you're going to be just chasing rabbits. So I think it's important to not blame others for your setup not sounding proper because it's, it's very easy to to blame others instead of just looking at what might have been done wrong or what the causes might actually be. So those are six reasons why I think your guitar tone still sucks. Like and subscribe if you like this kind of content or if you're here for the Metallica reworks, I promise you I've got something really special very soon that I'm working on right now. And uh, that Black in Black album rework, I should probably get on that. All right, take it easy guys.